Uh, this is the physics course of in, uh, uh, recording. Uh, it has top questions uh, from chapter 5 and chapter 4 and grid questions. Uh, if, uh, if you watch this, the previous uh, uh, course uh, recording and the, the one from week 7, then you're, you're good. Because you're good to go for tomorrow. Uh, before starting, uh, I have to say uh, that uh, gaming group in Dubai is better than the No Money Clan and Pro Clubs. Uh, because they're seven four up, okay. I was asked to say this, uh, but still, yani, uh, oh, Bilal, uh, المهم, uh, let's let's start. Let's start. Uh, yeah, I'm gonna skip this. Uh, I don't, I, I don't think it's gonna come to be honest. Uh, let's start. Start with this grid. Very easy. Which shape is not stable? And uh, like I solved it in the in the course in the in the quiz. These all have a vertical baseline intersecting with the base except c it intersects outside so it's gonna fall okay question 24 okay please don't get scared it's very easy but it has six parts um t question 24 a boy is moving up a ladder uh and the ladder has a weight capital w which is 50 newtons and it's placed next to the wall let's call this wall a uh, the horizontal force exerted by the wall on the ladder has a magnitude h is 250, which is over here. Uh, the vertical force exerted by the ground on the ladder is denoted v. So, by the ground on the ladder, v. Uh, the ladder is in equilibrium as long as the horizontal distance of the boy from v is less than x. So, it's, it, it's, the ladder is in equilibrium, it won't fall as long as it's uh, less than x. Use g equals 9.8. Okay. Part A, the mass of the boy is 40, what's his weight? This is very easy, everybody can solve W equals mg, 40 times 9.8, because it's given 9.8, huh? You get 392. Let me make sure. Uh, solutions, yep, 392. Calculate the moment of the weight W about B. Type, the weight W about B, if we want the moment of W around B. Capital W, we said it's 50 newtons. Is it clockwise or counterclockwise? B is over here. It goes like this, right? This is counterclockwise, but it's positive. If I positive 50 times the distance, which is 1.5. They gave you the perpendicular, huh? If they gave you over here is 1.5 this distance, you can't use it. You have to use, they should give you an angle if they give you that. But here they gave you the perpendicular distance. Because look, this is the line of action of the weight. This is the line of action of B. It's perpendicular over here, so you take this distance, which is 1.5. Uh, for 50 times 1.5, you get 75. Uh, C. Calculate the moment of force H about B. H is over here, right? B is over here. Okay. We need the perpendicular distance. Let's trace the line of action of H. It's like this. Let's trace the line of action of B. It's perpendicular over here. So we take this distance, which is 2.8, right? Okay, what's the force H? H, they said, is 250. Uh, the moment of H around B is going to be, is going like this, right? B is over here. Uh, not like this, sorry. It's going like this, so it's going to be clockwise. So it's negative. If I negative, 250 times 2.8. Uh, and you get, I'm not sure what you get, uh, 700. Uh, they want the magnitude? They want the moment. Why do they want? They took the magnitude here. I don't know why. Honestly, I don't know why. They didn't say. But if you put negative uh, 700, you'll get it correct. Uh, I don't know why. Calculate the moment. I think when they just say moment, really, I don't know really. But if you if you put minus uh, 700, you should get it correct. Uh, question D deduce the maximum distance x from point b so that the boy can move uh, without disturbing the equilibrium remember when i tell you equilibrium and it's not moving for sigma m equals zero so let's let's take a look at the moments we have we have this moment w which we found and it was 75 uh, we got this moment which is minus 700 and then we have this moment w we didn't find it, but we found that the force of it is uh, 392. Can we find the moment of it? Yes, we can. 
is going to be the moment of the weight around the small weight equals 392 positive because it's going counterclockwise times the distance okay the distance is x right the distance is x because we said to stay in equilibrium the, the the weight of the boy must be less than x for distance is x we don't know for plus 392x equals 0 right because sigma m equals 0 and add them all up you get 0 solve this you get 392x equals uh, 725 and you get x equals if you divide them you get x equals 1.94 i think divided by 392 you get 1.59 my fault my fault 1. Point, let me erase this you get 1.594 whatever whatever uh for in, in the solution they only took 1.59 part e deduce the magnitude of the force b okay we have the weight which is 392 and we have the the weight of the ladder which is 50. how much will this v be it's cancelling out these two right so it's just going to be 392 plus 50 equals 442. Is that correct? Yes. Shoo. Part F, they're asking what other force acts on the ladder to keep it in equilibrium. Type, okay. This ladder, if left, yani, it's going to slide down here, right? So it's going to be sliding in this direction. So actually, there's going to be a friction force that's preventing it from sliding. So the answer is friction force. And in what direction will it be acting? It will be acting to the left. Because uh, it's sliding. If, if you leave it, the ladder slides to the right. For the friction, is going to be to the left. To oppose, you know, the friction is always opposite. Uh, yep. Yeah. Acting at B, directed horizontally leftwards. Okay, chapter 5. This, I'm going to solve the grids. Okay. Okay, let's solve 6. A uh, box with a square bottom of side 30. It has a mass of 18. What's the pressure? Pressure equals force divided by area. Uh, the force in this case, we don't have it because we have the mass. But you know, the force is the weight, right? So the weight over area. What's the weight? It's mg over air. The mass times g. So 18 times 10. So 180 over the area. So can we find the area? It's a square has a side of 30 what's the area of it it's going to be 30 times 30 you know the area of a square is 30 times 30 it's side times side that's 900 so 180 divided by 900 but that's in centimeters squared we need to change this to meter squared for 180 divided by 1 2 3 4 0 point zero nine i think uh do you get the same answer 180 times 0 divided by 0 point zero nine get uh, 2000 which is yeah 2 times 10 to the power of 3 for 7 it's a submarine that has they're saying it has a cylinder length r radius r l radius r cat by whatever whatever yap 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 okay calculate the pressure acting on the submarine when it's cruising at a depth of 200 okay uh density of water is 10 to the power of 3 okay what is the pressure uh acting on the submarine the submarine obviously is underwater, right? For the pressure acting on it is liquid pressure, no? For it's going to be rho g h for 10 to the power of 3, which is the density times g, which is obviously 10, and the height 200, and that's it, yani. That's literally it, just one application. Uh, rho g h, you get 2 times 10 to the 6. Okay, uh, now question 12. Uh, consider two points at the same level uh, in the liquid mercury. Here you have A and you have B, and they're at the same level. Uh, notice how B uh, is measuring atmospheric and A is measuring the liquid pressure of uh, of the height of that mercury. Uh, there's an explain the atmospheric uh, pressure in terms of density of the mercury and uh, the height of the mercury. Okay, so they wanted to express the atmospheric pressure in terms of uh, the density and the height. Oh, well, she look, the pressure of B equals the pressure of A. This is basics because uh, they're at the same level, yeah? Uh, that's the first thing. Then, what is pressure B? Pressure B is actually uh, the pressure of the atmosphere. 
because it's at the surface so it's measuring the atmosphere then what is the pressure of a it's rho g h right this is this is rho g h because it's in the liquid so you can say that the pressure of the atmosphere is equal to rho of h g times g times h h g is mercury now uh, and that's that's how they say it in the answer sheet uh, rho h g g h uh so this is actually how a barometer works uh because this uh, this liquid rises uh, as the pressure increases as the atmospheric pressure increases and this point over here is equal to the pressure here so it rises as the pressure increases this liquid goes up so the height increases uh, if the height of the mercury column is 75 centimeters what's the atmospheric pressure since we said that the atmospheric pressure uh from part a is equal to the pressure of the rho uh, gh then we can do it rho is 13600 times g times 0 0.75 you get uh, yep yeah, 102 kpa kpa and yani kilo that means you get 102000 and then they're saying kilo if I divide by 1000 you get 102 kpa if you keep it uh, in one as 102,000 Pascal, please don't for, uh, forget the unit Pascal. If you keep it in uh, 102,000, that is correct. Uh, okay, question 19. In a hydraulic press, a force of 20 newtons is applied to an area of 0 0.2. The area of the other piston is to uh, find the pressure transmitted. How much do they want the pressure? Pressure is force over area. So 20 divided by 0 0.2, and you get 100. Pascals, okay. Then they want the force on the other piston. Some people will use P equals F over A. We know that the the P is one hundred because you know it's equal huh? on both pistons. It's equal equals uh, force, which we don't know over the area, which is two. Then you get uh, uh, the force is two hundred if you cross multiply. Uh, but the way I taught you guys always, if you're working with a hydraulic press. Use F1 over A1 equals F2 over A2. Because this works without having to find the pressure. If you have a direct question, uh, use this formula. The pressure here is equal to the pressure there. And you're going to get, you're going to end up with the same thing. If you want to try 20 over 0 0.2 equals F2. Equals F2 over 2. And you cross, you get F2 equals 200. Uh, same thing. 200 newtons. Uh, please don't forget. Uh, describe in brief how a hydraulic press works. This you have to memorize. Uh, the hydraulic press allows to lift a large load using a small effort. Uh, since the pressure in liquids passes on in all directions, equal pressures are applied by the force and the load. Which can be used by different. Okay, look, look, look. Uh, hydraulic press, say hydraulic press allows to lift a large load using small effort. Because you can put in a small force over here, okay, and then a big area here, and it's going to lift it even if you have a small force on the left because the same pressure going in is the same pressure going out okay uh, why because the pressure uh, passes on in all directions so you could just say uh, why because equal pressures are applied by the effort and load uh, okay forget about this so if, if it comes uh, I doubt they bring a question like this but uh, I say a hydraulic press allows to lift large loads using small efforts uh, by uh, sorry, because equal pressures, equal pressures are applied uh, by both uh, pistons. Okay, uh, part B. Uh, the radius of uh, the left cylinder is two centimeters, and the right cylinder is ten centimeters. A downward force of twenty-five newtons applied to the left cylinder. Calculate the area of the left cylinder. Uh, this is they're telling you cylinder, but it's actually the area of the yani, the base, which is a circle, right? So. How would you find the area of the circle? It's pi r squared. So it's going to be the left cylinder. For we're talking about this one, which has 2 centimeters as the radius. For 4 pi, because it's pi times 2 squared, which is 4 pi. Calculate the pressure applied to the left cylinder. Uh, I don't think you can keep it in terms of pi. So if you, they want you to uh, show small, uh, don't, don't keep it in terms of pi. Uh, so you're going to put it in the calculator, you get 
0.6. Just keep it as 12.6. Uh, calculate the pressure applied in the left cylinder. Uh, it's going to be the force. Pressure equals F over A. So the force 25 over 12.6. Uh, let me see what they're doing here. Uh, huh? Ah, 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 okay, 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 they used it as, ah, uh, okay, they used it as meters, okay, type, okay, uh, they want to use it as meters, that's correct, you, you can't solve with centimeters, if, uh, for pi r squared, you have to convert this to meters, so it would be 0 0.02 meters, but it will be pi times 0 0.02 squared, and you get, let me see, 0 0.02 squared, times pi uh yeah you get 1.26 times 10 to the negative 3 uh or let's keep it like this 1.256 times 10 to the negative 3 calculate the pressure applied it will be the force 25 divided by that answer uh and you should get whoa that's a big number 1900 no 19894 so you get uh yeah 19,894. That's, that's what I got. Let me see what did they get here. Yeah, they, they convert it into a scientific notation. That is the same thing as saying 1.98 times 10 to the power of 4. I think, yeah. Okay, and this is the same. Oh, we got 1.26. Yeah, they kept it 1.26. Okay, uh, I, 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 I. We did it. Calculate the total upward force caused by the liquid. Again, uh, this is we said 1.26 times 10 to the negative 3. Calculate the total upward force F1 over A1 equals F2 over A2. This is the way I like using it. So the force 125 over A1, which is 1.26 times 10 to the negative 3, equals F2, which we don't know, over the area 2. Area 2, you have to find it, yeah? If, uh, this area it has a radius of 10. Uh, we have to use it as 0 0.1 meters because 10 divided by 100 is 0 0.1. Uh, you get uh, pi times 0 0.1 squared uh, and it equals, let me see, pi times 0 0.1 squared. Whoa, that's just one number. L let's just keep it as answer. Okay, uh, if you cross multiply 25 divided by 1.26 times 10 to the negative 3. You get 623.3. Am I correct? Yeah, oh, yeah, they kept it at 6.22. Oh, because well, why did they do that? Uh, power squared, okay, 1.98 times 10 to the 4 Pascal, which is okay, times okay, times. Okay, 1.98 times 10 to the 4 times 3.1 forward times 0.1. Yeah, okay. Okay, okay. They, you can use this way. They used it as... They used it as this. Uh, they said, you no, know, the pressure equals force over area. If, uh, if you want to calculate the force, uh, the force equals the pressure times area. Okay. Uh, because, you know, it's the same pressure here and here, yeah? If, uh, we, got, we got the pressure that was 1.98 times 10 to the 4. Uh, so the force equals 1.98 times 10 to the 4. Times the area. Uh, you know, the area is pi r squared. Yeah. If uh, they put 1.98 times 10 to the 4 times pi r squared. Annual r is 0 0.1. 1.98 times 10 to the 4 times pi times 0 0.1 squared. My way also makes sense and gets you the correct answer, but they no, to one significant figure different. If you show your work using my way, uh, you you should get it correct. Also, it's the same way. I, mean, I don't know. Uh, I think I used because yeah, it's the same way. If you show your work using my way, uh, obviously to the correct significant figures. Uh, then you're going to end up with the same answer. Okay, uh, for whatever you like to use. Uh, now, question 21. Okay, this is the question. Some of you guys, any, you you, uh, you were panicking when you saw it. 
An ice cube that has a density of 920 and side of 5 centimeters is floating in water and uh, the water has a density of 1000, UG equals 9.8. Okay, calculate the weight of the ice cube. W equals mg. Do we have the mass of this ice cube? We don't. But what do we have? We have the density. Okay, density is mass over volume. Right? Fa the mass equals density times volume. Uh, and the volume in this case, I think it's, wait, what was the volume? Is it 5? Yep. It's, it's, yeah, it's 5. It's 5. Oh, no, it's not 5. It's a cube, yeah? It's a cube. Fa the mass equals d times v. But let's actually, let's rewrite this. Let's not find the volume. Let's write this as w equals d times v times g. Because mass is d times v. Type. W equals the density, which is 920. I don't know why I put Km. It's supposed to be Kg. Uh, times V times 9.8. Can we find V? Okay. It's a cube. It's a cube. Uh, cube with side length uh, 5 centimeters. Can you find the volume of this? Of course you can. Oh, well, she not don't use centimeters. Convert it to meters. 0 0.05 meters. Can you find the volume of it? You know the volume of any cube? The volume of cube is equal to the side to the power of 3. Okay, so 0 0.05 to the power of 3 is your volume. For if you go back here, you get 920 times 0 0.05 to the power of 3 times 9.8. And you should get, yep, uh, you get 1.13 newtons. For part B, they're asking, determine the magnitude upward force exerted by the surrounding water on the cube. Type, if we got the weight is 1.13 newtons. Actually, the water is going to push back the ice cube with another force of 1.13 newtons because it's a, it's floating. If it wasn't floating, that would be different. Uh, see, the ice cube is in equilibrium, so it's 1.13 newtons. Deduce the value of x, the height of the ice cube above the water. For for part C, deduce the value of x. It's uh it's a bit it's a bit trickier. Okay, نحنه هلا for part A, we found that the weight of the ice cube is equal to density times volume times G. We found our weight is 1.13. That's the force acting downwards. The density of the water doesn't change, right? It's 1000. The volume, now, I, I want to calculate the volume of this uh, part of the ice cube that's underwater. So let's keep it as V. And G is 9.8. So we can find V by dividing everything on the other side. 1.13 divided by 1000 times 9.8. Uh, what you should get, uh, yeah, you get this. 115, 1.15, times 10 to the negative 6 meter cube. Okay, that's what you get. As your volume. Top. Okay, shukas. Okay, look here. The volume of any shape from geometry is equal to area of base times the height. Top. Okay, what's the base over here? It's a square, right? With sides L and L. So the area of the base is L squared. The height is the side L, we want this part, right, minus X, minus this part here. So if I could like, rewrite this, uh, say this one more time. The volume is the area of the base. The base stays the same, right? We're only cutting the height, We're only cutting the height. The height now, it used to be L, right? Because it used to be a cube. It used to be L. We only want this part, so we're taking away this x over here. We're taking away this part. Fa this height here is equal to L minus x. Fa L squared times L minus x equals V. Let's substitute a bit. We know the side is 5 centimeters, which is yeah, 0 0.05 meters squared uh, times 0 0.05 minus x equals 116 times 10 to the power of negative 6 because this is the volume we found for 0 0.05 minus x equals 116 times 10 to the negative 6 
over 0.05 uh, squared. Let's put this on a calculator. You're gonna get 0 0.0464, so 0 0.05 minus x equals 0 0.0464. Uh, correction, I don't know why I put 116, it's 115. Uh, 115. 115. Uh, I wrote here 115, so I don't know how I got 116 over here. Uh, yeah, 115, sorry, times 10 to the negative 6. Over high, you get 0 0.046. Take uh, minus x equals 0 0.046 uh, minus 0 0.05. You get x equals, uh, I think it's, you're going to get x equals 4 times 10 to the negative 3. Uh, if you subtract it, you get a negative answer, but since you have negative x equals negative, but it becomes positive. Uh, you get 4 times 10 to the negative 3, which is equal to 0 0.004 meters. Uh, depends, I don't know, if they want it in meters, keep it as this. But if they want it in centimeters, you multiply by 100, and you get x equals uh, 0 0.4 centimeters uh, I'm not sure if that's correct let me see uh, yeah x equals 0 0.4 centimeters using your answer to see explain why icebergs constitute a danger to the ships okay if you have a height of 5 okay only 0 0.4 of it is up and the rest of the 4.6 is actually underwater it can't be seen but only the 0 0.4 part of it can be seen and the rest is, is uh, sunken underwater why do you think that's a th threat to the ship? Because most of an iceberg's height is underwater, which is unseen to the ship, and that's thus capable of damaging the ship. That's it for the recording. Thank you so much for watching, and good luck.